and welcome to Stuff from the Future. I'm Kristen Conger, Hal Stuff Works staff writer and co-host of the podcast Stuff Mom Never Told You. And today I'm going to talk about male birth control of the future. Because in 2010, the uh, the birth control pill for women celebrated its 50th anniversary. And in that time, women have gotten oh IUDs. We've gotten uh, patches and rings and pills galore. But what I guys have, guys, today you only have five options. Okay, five options going to Planned Parenthood if you don't want to make a baby. All right, you got you got condoms, you got withdrawal, you have outer course, vasectomy, and abstinence. You have nothing in terms, aside from vasectomy, nothing in terms of a long-term birth control, and certainly nothing that is long-term and reversible. And it's not because medical researchers haven't been looking for some kind of male birth control, similar to the, the pill for women, uh, but the thing is, it's taken them a little while to figure out the right way to go. Things are a little bit easier for trying to figure out how to um, create birth control for women because the scientists only had to control for one thing, one egg every month, that's all they had to block. I liken the, uh, the quest for male birth control to something called, in my mind at least, <laughs> the 120 million sperm challenge. One egg, 120 million sperm, I would rather be on that science team, okay, that's a lot easier. So first, scientists try to go a hormonal route, saying um, if we can just block testosterone, which stimulates sperm production in the testes, then we're good. We can just stop the body from making sperm. Well, they figured out that if you actually pump the body full of testosterone higher than their normal levels, then that shuts down sperm production because it tricks the male body into thinking that the testes are full and good to go. But if you pump the male body full of a ton of testosterone, then you also get things like acne, weight gain, prostate growth, and uh, all sorts of just liver problems and things you don't really want. In order to counterbalance those effects, these doctors said, well, hey, if we can just inject them with some testosterone, we can balance it out with progesterone hormone shots, and then they'll be fine. Does that sound like fun to you guys? Anyone? Do you want to get? Do you want to have implants of testosterone and then shots every month just to keep your acne at bay? No, I don't think so. But in the future, it might not be like that because doctors have figured out that the way to go is non-hormonal. Forget about testosterone. Let's figure out how to disable those sperm on their way out of the penis. All right. So this Indian scientist named Sujoy Guha, all right, he figured out over 30 years of research how to kill sperm on their way out of the penis. It doesn't dissolve them, they still come out, a man will still ejaculate in a normal kind of way, but if you inject a certain kind of gel into the vas deferens, okay, which is, uh, let's, let's just take a moment and uh, and chart out the path of, of sperm. First, you, they're made in the testes, okay? And then you have the epididymis, which is actually 16 feet long. Fun fact, did you know that? Because that's where the sperm have to learn how to swim, so they need a lot of room to grow. Anyway, so testes, epididymis, vas deferens, and out, all right? So if you inject this gel into the vas deferens, the chemical compounds somehow interact with the sperm on their way out, destroying the membrane, rendering them totally worthless. And guess what, folks? With all of his research, all of his test subjects so far, 100% infertile. All right, and this can last anywhere from 10 to 15 years. Men don't have to have babies if they don't want to have babies. That's kind of incredible. I mean, those are higher rates than the pill for women. Here's the downside, though. I mean, you can't you can't get this. The uh, the injection is actually uh, known by an acronym, RISUG, but thankfully an American company has taken over the rights to this technology, renamed it Vazel Gel, which is still still a little silly, but Vazel Gel does sound a little more palatable than RISUG, but you know, 
tomato, tomato, I guess. But they're having trouble getting FDA approval because, first of all, it's taken a long time to get the technology from India to the U.S. where they can do more rigorous testing to prepare it for the FDA trials that it'll have to go through before it can reach the market. So a company called uh, Parmetheus, I believe, bought the rights to the technology, like I said, for $100,000. And their goal is to get basil gel onto the market by 2015. But the only thing is, Big Pharma is not a big fan of male birth control. Because with a lot of these non-hormonal options that medical researchers are coming up with, like basil gel, they last so long that it's not going to be very profitable for anyone. If you only need one injection to render yourself infertile for 15 years and then one injection to reverse it if you decide in that 15 years that you'd like to have a baby, then they're not going to make a ton of cash as opposed to women who every month have to re-up their pill. So in the future, hopefully, maybe, uh, I don't know, male birth control and sexual health needs might outweigh profits in the pharmaceutical industry, but I don't know. Um, but keep your ear out for Vazel Gel because I have a feeling that if male birth control is going to happen, that's the way it's going to go. For more on this and thousands of other topics, visit HowStuffWorks.com. And don't forget to check out our other podcasts free on iTunes.